Welcome back to Theory Hammer, my friends. This is going to be part two of our balanced data slate coverage, whatever you want to call it, Minotaur and Field Manual updates, points updates, rules updates for October 2024. We're going to go over some of the rules and stuff today instead of the point stuff that we did in our other video. If you haven't seen it, it's probably linked down below. If it isn't, just go watch it. And of course, Thunder Hammer that subscribe button, that like button, Nurgle's bell icon, and check out our other videos as well. And leave a comment. Let us know what you think. I'm only going to go over most of this um i've looked through all of these and i haven't seen updates in a lot of them so i know they're there but they're not highlighted um i know a couple of the main ones as well so i'll just tell you guys what those are but i've got several tabs open here and we're going to just roll right through it all right so i changed my mind i brought us into uh acrobat instead so we're gonna go over the pride nexus tournament champion thing first here we go the stuff in red is what we're looking for here. We'll just go page by page, because there's not very much. So, this is the first thing here. In the fifth battle round, you cannot score any victory points from the primary mission card if you're selecting a secret mission. So that's in the secret mission section here. So, you can't score any points from like, um, from burning an objective, for example. You can't do that. So in the fifth battle round, you can't score any points from that. Um, I'm trying to think of some other situations where this matters. Um, pro yeah, like probably going first and burning objectives and stuff like that. Um, it probably matters for that. So, in the fifth battle round, if you're doing a secret mission, you can't score any points from the primary mission anymore. So that's how that is uh, going to work there. It's kind of interesting. Alright, next, let's continue on. So, recover assets didn't change, uh, assassination did change. If one or more character models are destroyed, you get 5 points. And then if all character models are destroyed, you get the 5 points. Cull the Horde, these might have been changed before, but they're in red now, so I'm assuming that they're new. So then Cull the Horde, um, this looks like it changed. When that unit's player added that unit to their army, the points value they subtracted from their total permitted for the battle was sufficient for that unit to be comprised of 20 more models. I feel like that's still there. Okay, that was the same one. All right, so Scorched Earth. Each time a player burns an objective marker, that player scores five victory points if that objective marker is in no man's land or 10 victory points instead if it's in the opponent's deployment zone. Okay, so that's just what happens. Uh, so for Lynchpin, you can only max at 15 now. And then for Hidden Supplies, all right, so it says here, otherwise the players roll off and the winner selects which corner the objective marker is moved towards. We got this uh, little FAQ here. If my opponent selects an attached unit for the Marked for Death secondary mission, which unit forming that attached unit must I destroy to score the victory points? So to score victory points, you must destroy the bodyguard unit and at least one of the leader units that was attached to it. So for example, if your opponent selects a unit of boys led by a war boss and a weird boy, and you destroy that boys unit and the war boss and the weird boy each become individual units, you must also destroy either that war boss or that weird boy. Or one of them must be removed from the battlefield for any other reason to score the victory points. Okay, so that's kind of a weird ruling, I would say. The fact that if uh, the unit contains multiple characters, you don't have to destroy both of them. That's an interesting ruling. When selecting a unit for marked for death secondary mission, can I select a leader within an attached unit? No. No, you cannot. When performing the terraform action, can I terraform an objective uh, that my opponent has already terraformed? Pretty sure this was already pretty clear. The answer is no. So now you know for sure. When do I resolve the mission rules, such as supply drop, which happen at the start of the battle, just after the determined first turn step? So I'm pretty sure those are all of the changes that are made. These red measurements are the same, I am pretty sure. So, that is going to be your um, Pariah Nexus Tournament Companion Champion, whatever that word is that's printed on there. That's going to be the updates for that. So not too much, not too much that's different now. But let's continue on to the core rules because there's a lot more. So everything in red is what we're looking for. We're just going to continue on these pages and just see what we find here. So move units is the first thing that we find. Add the following. Surge moves. Some rules enable units to make out of phase surge moves uh, when certain triggers occur, like Corn Berserkers, the Blood Surge ability, so like, you know, Curse Cultists, things like that. Unless otherwise stated, the following restrictions apply to all such moves. Each unit can only make one surge move per phase. 
Good. A unit cannot make a surge move while it is battle shocked. Makes sense. A unit cannot make a surge move while it is within an engagement range of one or more enemy units. Was it allowed to before? Because that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, okay, so you can't do that now, but they made it very clear if you have a surge move, like how it actually works. So I'm glad they did that personally. So this stuff we already know. Nothing new there. Nothing new there. Leaders. Each time the last model in a bodyguard unit is destroyed, each character unit that is a part of that, the, that attached unit is no longer part of that attached unit. It becomes a separate unit with its original starting strength. If this happens as the result of an attack, they become separate units after the attacking unit has resolved all of its attacks. Not sure when that wouldn't be as the result of an attacking unit's attacks. I guess mortal wounds that are not an attack. But yeah. So then you have each time the last uh, model in a character unit that is attached to a bodyguard unit is destroyed and there is not another character unit attached, the attached unit's bodyguard unit is no longer part of an attached unit. It becomes a separate unit with an original starting strength. If it happens as a result of an attack, they become separate units after the attacking unit resolves all of its attacks. And this is important for things like assassinate and, and stuff like that, or when like you destroy things that are on objectives. If you have a character in the unit, something just like fell down downstairs. If you have a character in a unit, um, and you destroy something on an objective when you have overwhelming force, that's one unit. It used to be two, now it's one. This was not a change. That part of it was not a change. Uh, here, this this red part is, but I'm just saying, so, yeah. All right, so, no changes. Timing and sequencing. I guess we'll start on FAQs here. If an attack is subject to a rule that changes its damage characteristic to zero, as well as another rule that applies as a negative modifier to its damage characteristic to a minimum of one, what happens? The damage characteristic is just changed to zero. Simple. Easy. I like it. Timing and sequencing. If a unit is destroyed and that same unit is later returned to the battlefield, so Angron, St. Celestine, do any persisting effects that applied to that unit when it was destroyed continue to apply, like judgment tokens, for example? Yes. Within the timing limitations of those persisting effects. Note that this does not apply when you are instructed to add a new unit to your army. That makes sense because it's a new unit. It's not the same unit coming back to life. Next, when a model is destroyed until it has been removed from the battlefield, does it continue to benefit from all of the abilities and aura ability abilities and aura abilities it is within range of and its own aura abilities to continue to affect eligible units within range? Yes, in all cases. Okay. It's specifically saying that Things, until the moment that they are actually destroyed, continue to have an aura of some kind. So, like, if there's some other effect that triggers as the result of a model, like, being destroyed, and then that trigger has to happen, f like, then, and then, like, I don't know, something blows up or something, and it blows up models near you, and you're giving them a six-up feel-no-pain, but your guy's about to die, like, they get the six-up feel-no-pain, and then you remove the model. That's... But basically how I'm reading that is that they continue to stay, the abilities stay on the table until like the second you remove it. Alright, so if some rules take effect at the start of a phase, turn, or battle round, and another rule takes effect during that same phase, turn, or battle round without specifying the start, can the latter rule take effect before all of the other rules are resolved? In most cases, no. Rules that take effect at the start of a phase Turn or battle round must be fully resolved before any rules that do not specify that they take effect at the start of the... Yeah, okay. So, basically, it's no, uh, unless you unless it says otherwise. The exception to this is that if you, are, if you use a rule that takes effect at the start of a phase or turn in your opponent, and your opponent has a rule that explicitly triggers as a result of your rule taking effect, their rule can take effect at the, uh, the same stated time. For example, if a Thousand Suns player uses Doombolt to inflict um, mortal wounds on their opponent's Adeptus Custodes unit, when one of those mortal wounds is allocated, their opponent could immediately use the Arcane Genetic Alchemy Stratagem to grant that unit a 4-up Feel No Pain against mortal wounds, since the stratagem is triggered just after a mortal wound has been allocated to an Adeptus Custodes model from your army. That makes sense. Alright. That's a lot of words to read. Here's some more words for me to read. Positioning and movement. If a rule enables a unit to make an out-of-phase surge move determined by a dice rule, so Corn Berserker, so like a d6, 
When a model makes such a move, does it have to move the full distance allowed by the dice roll? No, it can move any distance up to the result. That makes sense, you don't have to move the full six, for example. If a roll enables a unit to make an out of phase surge move determined by a dice roll, the same example, can I choose not to move the unit after seeing the dice roll? Yes, you can, but your unit does still count as having made, that move, uh, made the move even though you only move zero inches. If my opponent uses the fire overwatch stratagem to shoot a unit from my army and destroys one or more of its models, and then I, I then use a rule that enables that unit to make an out of phase surge move, example, corn berserkers, and that brings my unit within engagement range of one or more enemy units, can any models in my unit continue to resolve the move that triggered that use of the fire overwatch stratagem? So like your normal move, basically. No. And conversely, if your opponent used the fire overwatch stratagem at the start of your unit's move, and that surge move was insufficient to bring it into uh, engagement range, your unit can, uh, can continue to resolve that original move as normal. So that's pretty cool. So... I go to target a unit to move, and you're like, all right, overwatch, boom. And I'm like, cool, I did six move. I moved three extra inches, and now I'm going to do my six inch normal move. Cool. All right. I don't think there's much else here. So rules commentary. There might be just a tiny, teeny bit. There is something with um, visibility and ruins. I think that's down here. Yeah. So ruins and visibility. The diagram below. Okay, no. The diagram below illustrates it doesn't have the s there that's why it fucked me up how visibility can be affected when units are within wholly within or behind ruins for vehicles excluding walkers that have a base or models without bases every part of that model and its base if it has one is used for determining if it is not within within or wholly within a ruin for all other models that model's base is used to determine if it is within or not within or wholly within or whatever and for the purposes of visibility through a ruin, visibility to and from such a model that overhangs its base is determined by only its base and parts of the model that uh, do not overhang the base. It's really fucking confusing, the whole thing together. But basically, um, you have a guy, right? You have a base. As long as it's not a vehicle, and if it's a walker, you're excluded, then... It's just this tall. Like, every the base is all you can see. So if Magnus's wings, or anybody's wings, or, like, Morvan Vol's giant fucking sword thing, because she's a vehicle walker um, with a base, you can't see her if her sword is, like, over the terrain. You can only see, like, up to the base. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. I had to read this a couple times <laughs> for it to make sense. Um, and then every other models are just the same, like... They're just, they just use their base to determine if they're wholly on or not. So, yeah. You don't, like, put Magnus's wing over terrain and be like, he's in terrain technically. He's not in terrain. It has to be part of his, like, base. That's in terrain. Okay. Next. I think that might be it for this. There are some diagrams here. Um, this is stuff we already knew from what I was reading earlier. So that's not really uh, interesting to me. Next, 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 next. Okay, so that's the bottom. So just a little couple changes, um, some quality of life things, and just some clarifications and some standardizations to surge, move, uh, surge moves, which I like a lot. That is our um, rules commentary updates. Next, we're going to go on to the chaos. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. So red's what we're looking for. First one is the falsehood enhancement it's the third sentence you change it to if you do in the reinforcement step of one of your movement phases you can select one model in a friendly legionnaire chosen unit um, that has two or more models remaining and is on the battlefield excluding attached units cool i don't know what that enhancement does i forget <laughs> unstoppable rampage so they basically added vashtor to a couple of these so the Unstoppable Rampage, uh, the target is one Heretic Astartes vehicle or Vashtor the Archophane. Um, yeah. And it's not been selected to move or charge. Same thing with this next one, Predatory Pursuit Stratagem. Uh, target selection, you change it to target one Heretic Astartes vehicle or Vashtor the Archophane unit from your army. That is within nine inches of an enemy unit and not within an engagement range. Feeding Frenzy is the next one. Same deal change the target to include Vashtor the Archophane. Um, that's not changed. Alright, so Cypher, 
the Agent of Discord ability has had this little bit added to it here. Each time your opponent targets a unit from their army with a stratagem, if that unit is within 12 inches of this model, increase the cost of that stratagem by 1. And then this added part, this is not cumulative with any other rules that would increase the cost of that stratagem. Okay, so if you had multiple ways to make people's stratagems cost more, you can't do that. <laughs> Chaos Lord and Terminator Armor now has the Chaos Lord keyword. That took how long? Over a year? Chaos Predator Destructor, you can now hit on fours. Great. Now we're on the FAQ section. If I'm using the Decep Deceptor's Detachment, when I use the Scrambled Coordinate Stratagem, can my opponent sequence one, uh, one or more of their end of movement phase abilities, like the jump, to happen after that stratagem effects ends? Yes. Cool. I don't remember what that stratagem does. But you can do stuff afterward. There's like three for the soul link here. When using soul link enhancement, can the bearer use a data sheet ability it gains as the result, even if that ability has already been used by another character model as many times as its restrictions allow. So for example, you know, once per battle, once per, once per phase things, you can copy those. Cause I had the same question when I first read the chaos codex, I was like, wait, if it says that you can use this once a battle and you did that, wouldn't, you also like have the restriction of it only able to being used once a battle even though it's on another character now so the answer is no you can use that shit so that's cool um that's that's that when using the soul link enhancement can i select a character model from my army that is not on the battlefield excluding character models when embarked within a transport yes just about any ability that triggers happens for things that are in reserve or not on the battlefield as long as they're not in a transport which is fucking stupid but yeah that's that is how that works can my character with the soul link enhancement use that enhancement while it's in reserves or strategic reserves like i just said yes um because you're allowed to do things like that when placing uh, when replacing the data sheet ability of the bearer of the soul link enhancement with those of the selected character model does this include core and faction abilities yes Interesting. I'll have to reread it. Why, why, why would it include? Hang on. Okay. So I had to read that again because it replaces all of them. <laughs> That's a really good enhancement. Um, so yeah, it replaces all of them. Um, let's see what this one says. I think this is the next one, right? Um, bu 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 yeah, okay. When replacing the data sheet abilities of the bearer for the soul link enhancement with those of the selected character model, does this include which units the bearer can be attached to. No. If I'm using veterans of a long word attachment and I select an attached unit to be my focus of hatred, if that unit splits for any reason, are each of the resulting units my focus of hatred until the start of uh, my next command phase? Yes. So if you somehow combat squad or something in uh, like in the middle of the game, then you are splitting and they're coming to get me guys. Uh, you're splitting, and you're both you're both the uh, focus of hatred. If I'm using veterans of the long war, can I select a unit embarked within the transport to be the focus of hatred? No. For the opportunistic raiders stratagem, is a unit that did not fight this phase an eligible target for that stratagem, provided it was eligible to fight at one point during the phase? Yes. Okay. When using the balance data slate, can I use the opportunistic raiders stratagem to fall back with a unit of warp talons and then use that unit's warp strike ability to place it in, into strategic reserve. Yes, you can. However, it has to have destroyed a unit. Otherwise, no. While using the balance data slate for the warp talons warp strike ability, is that uh, is a unit that did not fight this phase eligible to use that ability provided it was eligible to fight at one point during the phase? No. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, when is the model destroyed by the Emperor's Enforcer's Brutal Example ability removed before re resolving the Fire Overwatch stratagem with that unit. When is Fabius Bile's Churjin ability resolved? After the attack or other effect that destroyed the Fabius Bile model has been resolved. In the event that he has returned to the battlefield, while there are still attacks to be resolved against that unit, those attacks can still be resolved. Okay. Cool. Good to know. And then I guess that's uh, that's all of them. All right, so that's our Chaos Space Marines. That was a pretty long one. 
Tyranids, okay. Let's just go, let's go. Surprise assault stratagem. You change it to in your shooting or fight phase just after a vanguard invader unit from your army is selected, uh, has selected its target. You target that vanguard invader unit. Select one enemy unit that was selected as the target of one or more of your unit's attacks. They take a battle shock test until the end of the phase. Um, each time a model from your unit targets that unit, add one of the hit roll, and if they got battle shocked, add one of the wound roll. So the Swarm Lord, Malign Presence, you uh, you change it to. If this model is your Warlord, each time your opponent targets a unit from their army with a stratagem. If that unit is within 12 inches of this model, increase the cost by one. So if you're targeting opponent's units with stratagems, which I don't... Can you do that? It's not usually a thing, right? FAQs, what is the effect of Unseen Lurker Stratagem with respect to the balanced data slate ruling on stratagems that prevent units from being targeted? The effect of the Unseen Lurker Stratagem becomes, until the end of the phase, your unit can only be selected as the target of a ranged attack if the attacking model's unit is within 18 inches of yours, or within 18 inches, or if your unit has the lone operative ability, if the attacking model is within 6 inches. Your opponent can select new targets for the attacks. Okay. Do units that are repositioned by rules that do not specify that the unit being repositioned is first placed into reserve, example, Grey Knight Teleport Assault Rule, uh, do they need to take a Battleshock test on a roll of a 2+, plus if a tiered character with the Hunting Grounds Enhancement is on the battlefield? Uh, so yes, rules that are triggered rules that are triggered or apply to reserve units are also triggered by and apply to repositioned units when it is set back up. I don't know what that enhancement is, I don't remember. But that's the ruling on that question. Can I use Rapid Regeneration Stratagem when an ability like Doombolt or Vortex of Doom would inflict mortal wounds on a Tyranid unit from my army? No. When resolving the Moloch's Terror from the Deep ability, which units need to take a Battleshock test? It's every unit within 12 inches of the Moloch or only those for which you have rolled a 5 plus when resolving the ability. And it's only those that you roll 5 plus for. If my opponent uses a rule to place a unit into strategic reserve during the first battle round, and that rule states that unit must arrive on the battlefield in the next battle round, what happens if a model from my army uses the psychostatic disruption enhancement in the second battle round when that enemy, when that enemy strategic reserve unit is due to arrive? They cannot use that rule, basically. They cannot arrive, the cannot arrive rule takes precedence over the rule stating that the unit must arrive from strategic reserve. Roll a d6 on a, two, on a four plus, that enemy unit cannot arrive on the battlefield this turn. Okay. If I select a unit of Neurogaunts for a Neurotyrant Neuroloid's ability, Jesus Christ, <laughs> that is not led by a synapse unit, just that unit of Neurogaunts gains the synapse keyword. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Neurotyrant Neuroloid on a Neurogaunt squad. <laughs> That's Tyranids. Uh, Tau. They just they just straight up changed the pure tied uh, Neuro chip thing because it was it didn't function. Now each time you target the bear's unit with a stratagem roll of d6 on a four plus, you gain one CP. Worth, kind of. For like 10 points uh then we have our faqs yeah there's only one page if uh, if i modeled my crisis battle suit using the flying stems provided in the kit rather than the gluing them directly to the bases do those models have a pivot value of two no their pivot value is still zero so here's another edge case for you because they come with flying things and if you look at the the core rule commentary thing where they updated the pivot thing there's like a table in there and it says that if you're on a flying stem and you have a base you yeah so this is basically saying, oops, you're supposed to just be glued to the base. If I'm using the Crute Hunter or Crute Hunting Pact attachment, can I use a Crute War Shaper's War Leader ability to modify the CP cost of the Join the Hunt stratagem, selecting as its target that War Shaper's own bodyguard unit that was just destroyed? No. If I'm using the Crute Hunting Pact attachment, if an enemy unit selects a Crute unit from your, uh, my army as the target of a ranged attack, but I use the Hidden Hunter stratagem so that my Kroot unit is no longer an eligible target for any of those attacks, and there are no other eligible targets for those attacks, as described in the core rules commentary stuff. Can my nearby Krutox rider still use their ability to shoot back? No. And that's it. That's Tau. Alright, on to Orcs. Bunch of stuff here. Gazgul Thraka. You change his WOG banner to while a friendly Orcs unit is within 12 of Makari if the WOG is active for your army. Melee weapons equipped by models in that unit have lethal hits, so it doesn't give it 
all the time. War boss abilities, the biggest and the best, change too. While the WOG is active for your army, add four to the attacks characteristic. So that will just always affect it. War boss and mega armor, same deal. While the WOG is active for your army, change it to uh, change the damage characteristic of three for his melee weapon. Zog, Grog, Wart, Snaga ability ch special dose change to the same thing. While Wog is active for your army, uh, add six inches to the move characteristic of models in his unit. Mega Knobs, Crump and Time ability, same deal. While the Wog is active for your army, they have a five up feel no pain. Uh, Morkanaut, big and shooty. While it's active, so while the Wog's active is when you add one to the hit roll for that guy. Gorknot ability, same deal. Literally the same deal. And then we have our FAQs, which are two pages here. If a character is attached to a unit of Mega Noms at the start of the battle round, in which I called the WOG, but the bodyguard unit is destroyed before the end of the battle round, does the surviving character keep the 5 up Fiona Pain conferred by the Mega Noms? Uh, it does not, basically. It loses the 5 up Fiona Pain once it's no longer an attached unit, which happens as soon as the destroyed, the last bodyguard destroyed is when they become a different unit. So, can my opponent? Uh, use the fire overwatch stratagem when I remove boss Necrot's unit from the battlefield using his cunning but brutal infiltrator ability. No, you cannot. Can my opponent use the fire overwatch stratagem when I set boss's Snickerot's unit back up on the battlefield? Yes, unless he's leading a unit of commandos, because they have like an ability that says you can't overwatch them. When the bully boy's detachment, when using it, do war boss knobs and mega knob abilities that checks if the wog is active for your army work during the second wog? Of course they do. Yes. That's orcs. Let's move on to sisters. Immolator transport section, second paragraph. Uh, we're adding this part to it. So if you are splitting a unit that has a cherub, only uh, one of the units can use the cherub. So you have to make a note of which one it is. All right. So before, when you had cherubs in the unit, you would just split it and then both guys would be able to get it. Now you can't do that. But otherwise it remains the same, you know, can split these different units. For the FAQs, if a character with the saintly example enhancement is destroyed while within 12 inches of a friendly Imagifier, can I use the Imagifier's Litany of Deeds ability to reroll the results of the additional D3 Miracle Dice that I gain from this enhancement before adding them to the pool? Yes. Great. That's pretty cool. If I'm using the Penance and Host attachment, do I have to select a Vow of Atonement every battle round? Yes. So you literally have to select one. All Like from turn one, you have to select one. This means that from the fourth battle round onward, you will no longer be able to select a Vow of Atonement to be active for your army, and you will have already selected all of them during the previous three battle rounds. That sucks. If a character with the Verse of Holy Piety enhancement uses that enhancement to activate a Vow of Atonement at the start of a battle round, but that character is destroyed before the end of the battle round by precision or something, is that Vow of Atonement still active for the remaining models in the unit? Yes. Okay. That's what we got for sisters. Nice. Necronians. Obiescence Phalanx. Worthy foes detachment rule, you change it to, it's the same thing except nobles are also included now. This took way too long to add. And we also gained um, Triarch from the Silent King. So he can actually use stratagems now from this detachment, which is Pretty sweet, because I like being able to use detach or uh, to use stratagems in detachments that are specifically designed for this guy. So that's awesome. The Plasmancer's Living Lightning can no longer target Lone Ops, basically, unless they're within 12 of the Lone Op. When using the Protocol of the Undying Legion stratagems, are other rules that are uh, applicable to reanimation protocols applied, such as the number Legion stuff from Warriors? It does apply. If I'm using the Canoptic Court and there's no objective markers anywhere except for in my deployment zone, is those are like is no man's land, my opponent's deployment zone, are they no, uh, in the power matrix? And the answer is no. There has to be an objective there and you have to be able to control it. That's Necrons. Okay, Gene Stealer Cults. Brood Brothers, Auxiliate Attachment, you change the second paragraph to a Gene Stealer's Cults model, must be your warlord, and Astro Militaire models uh, from your army lose the voice of command ability. Okay. Got it. Some FAQs here. If I include Karshkins, can they do orders on themselves? Yes. Um, when I set up a unit using the Cult Ambush Army Rule without using a marker, can I target it with the Tunnel Crawlers Stratagem? Yes. Okay, so a little bit of updates for the Gene Stealers there. Then we have our Admech. There's just one little FAQ. If I target a unit with the Auto Divinatory strat uh, Targeting Stratagem, while the Protector Imperative Protocol is active, 
uh, for the army. In what order are the ballistic skill modifiers applied? The ballistic skill characteristic of ranged weapons equipped by models in that unit is first changed to three by the stratagem and then improved by one by the per, uh, protector imperative for a final of two plus. So that's pretty cool. Assuming no other modifiers play. So you can get hitting on twos there. Custodies. We've got a little bit of an update here. I swear to God, I'm losing my ability to speak the longer this goes on. If an enemy model is within 12 inches of any part of a unit that is led by a character with the Radiant Mantle Enhancement, when that enemy model selects targets for its attacks, do those attacks suffer from the minus one hit roll penalty? Yes. If I'm using the Orc Champion's Detachment and an Adeptus Astodes character, I said Astodes, didn't I? Adeptus Custodes character model that is leading a unit from my army is destroyed by an attack with precision, for example. Does the assemblage of might detachment rule still apply to the remaining models in that unit at the start of my next command phase? Until the start of my next command phase. No. If I'm using the Auric Champion's detachment, when selecting an enemy unit for the assemblage of might detachment rule, can I select a unit that is embarked within a transport? No. That's it. Next is our Space Marines. So the Forged in Battle Enhancement. The only change here is that it's changed to an unmodified 6, which is pretty sweet. Uriel Ventress, Unorthodox Stratagem, it's changed to, uh, un Unorthodox Strategist is changed to, each time your opponent targets a unit from their army with a stratagem, if that unit is within 12 inches of this model, increase the cost of that stratagem's CPU cost by one, and it's not cumulative. This is red, but I don't see anything that's changed here, so I don't know if this is just added or, or what. Uh, so, Lieutenant, Lieutenant in Reaver Armor, Lieutenant in Phobos Armor, Leader Section, Second Paragraph. Basically, you can attach this model to a unit it can lead, even if a Captain or a Chapter Master are already attached. Desolation Squads, Targeter Optics, it's changed to each time this unit remains stationary until the start of your next movement phase. Ranged Weapons equipped by models in the unit have ignores cover. Okay, that unit's like 200 points still, I'm pretty sure, they're really expensive. Can I use a Captain's Right of Battle's ability to target that Captain's unit if it is in reserve or strategic reserve. Yes, you can. Does an objective marker that has been sabotaged by uh, my army using a deadly prize stratagem remain sabotaged if my opponent controls it at the start or end of a turn? Yes, however, while your opponent controls that objective marker, its ability to inflict mortal wounds is not active. Okay. If a Hellblaster is destroyed by anything other than an attack, can that model use its for the chapter ability? No. Damn. <laughs> So, if you overheat, you can't shoot back. And that's it for Space Marines. Only a couple little changes there. And then the last one we have here is for Blood Angels. These guys uh, just got their codex. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It's not linked, but just go watch it anyway. Um, so, we got a couple things here just to kind of clarify a few things. First one is Death from the Skies. It's uh, changed to your movement phase just after an Adeptus Astartes jump pack unit from your army advances or falls back. So before it was done in the charge phase and it didn't work because you already advanced so you couldn't have shot because you advanced and now it's your charge phase. So you're going to use it and then you're going to charge, but you couldn't have shot. So they changed it to the movement phase. Good. Sanguinary guard war gear option selections first and second bullet points change to any number of models can have their incarmine bleed or whatever replaced with an incarmine spear. And then the other part is that for every three models in the unit, one guy can have an inferno pistol. And then we do have some FAQ stuff here. Can I use the Sanguinor's uh, Miraculous Savior ability to set it up with an engagement range of two or more enemy units, provided at least one of those enemy units made a charge move this phase? And the answer is yes. So that's cool. So you can engage multiple units, uh, including ones that didn't actually charge, that didn't want to be in combat. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> can the Sanguinor arrive from reserve during the first battle round using its Miraculous Savior ability? Yes, provided the mission rules you are using... Uh, do not state otherwise. If you're using the Leviathan or Pariah Nexus mission packs, for example, then the answer is no. So basically, it counts as like a deep strike, and so you can't use it on turn one. So, and that is all the stuff. Um, there's a couple of other changes, or at least one other significant change, which is that tank commanders got the, uh, I believe, the squadron keyword, so they can now order themselves. They didn't have that before. Yeah, they got the squadron keyword. So that's good. Um, that's really good, actually. They went up in points, though. They went up to 225, so they went up 20 points. But, yeah, that seems really good, because now you don't have to have Lord Solar to order a bunch of tanks around. So, maybe you don't need Lord Solar anymore. 
So you're talking 60 points. Um, Lord Solar himself is like 120, right? Maybe 130? I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but you save points, actually, if you don't take Lord Solar. Because most people are just taking him by himself. Well, not most people. People were taking him by himself. Some people were. Personally, I think he's better in a unit because of the Vox that can extend his range out to 24 inches. But uh, anyway, yeah. So you're just going to take tank commanders not to worry about that shit. Uh, and yeah, that's... And you're just going to take a bunch of Ogren. Just tons of Ogren. They're like 60 points for a unit of three. They're 20 points apiece. They're insane. So yeah, guard got good. That's kind of a little side tangent. So that's going to do it for this uh, part two of the balanced data slate, my dear friends. If you guys liked the video, Thunderhammer the like and subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. Leave a comment. Check out our other videos. Check out our other channel as well. It's linked in the description. And I will uh, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Theory hard. Bye.